Okay. Okay, Keith. I want to talk now about an amazing miracle. In the country of Italy, a Catholic man was really away with the Mafia and was walking and talking as a Catholic man to his priest and needed prayer. And the priest refused to pray with him. He said, I discern there is a problem. Frank was so amazed that the priest knew about his private life, he stopped and he read that there was in the life of Jesus a moment when suddenly he began to be empowered by the Spirit. So Frank came along to Belfast and came to live in a terrorist area in Ardoin. And he came to hear that God was enabling Catholic people to see Jesus, to have a real personal experience with the Lord. <laughs> So he said, okay, uh, I'll have a word with the Pentecostal man that has a cafe next to mine and a shop, and I'll go along to a church here in Belfast. Oh, he said, tell me, would your pastor pray for me that I might receive the Spirit? So Frank came to this pastor and said, I have said Mass, I have said my confessions, I've had th several Hail Marys, can I now receive the Spirit of God? Now this man, this pastor, was from England, but he wasn't sure that Frank had ever met Jesus personally, that Frank had a personal knowledge of Jesus. He had religion, but he didn't have Christ. He said, I tell you what, pray about it and we'll come again next week. <laughs> he didn't know what to do. So Frank was a very discouraged. So he went home and he didn't know the Bible at all. He just flipped it open. Now, I don't recommend you do this, but he got a passage, I must decrease that he may increase, from John chapter 3. Oh, so Jesus is the answer. Okay, so he came back next week, he said, Pastor, I haven't been to Mass, I haven't said Hail Mary, but I believe that I need Jesus to forgive my sins and fill me with the Spirit. Great, said the pastor, laid hands on him, and Frank was the first Roman Catholic in the north of Ireland to get the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> A tremendous experience of God. Pastor said, don't come back. I don't want the IRA to follow you to my church. <laughs> Go to Keith Gurner with his house meetings in Queen's University and see what you can get. So Frank arrived on my doorstep. He said, <coughs> I don't want religion, I want Jesus and I want all of him. And could I bring another priest to the Shankle Road? I said, if you do, don't put a collar on him. <laughs> And that began the huge move in 1973 when God, through Jesus, outpoured his spirit. And we went to a meeting in the south and they began to praise Jesus in other languages. Oh, they said, we don't need the priest, we don't need Mary, we're through to Jesus. I said, great. Now then, I want to talk to you about healing. I'll tell you tomorrow about healing. When I got there together and all these people speaking in tongues, they didn't know whether they were saved or lost, they hadn't read the Bible, but they knew one thing, they could talk in their prayer language. What happened? As they talked to the Lord, 
the school teacher, Paddy, said, Keith, you don't need to pray. There's 14 people going to be healed. What? Huh? This is in Balladrine, in the middle of Catholic Ireland. The man in the wheelchair, the other woman, I've had a vision, they're going to be healed. Well, I said, I tell you what, I'm not the healer, Jesus is. You tell them to walk out the wheelchair, you tell them to be healed. Do you know, every one of the 14 people was instantly healed. It's not me, it's Jesus that does the healing. I then went to a convent, they'd asked me to open up the word of God. And... I showed them the scripture that Jesus is the answer. And then they said to me, if it's not too much trouble, would you pray for two or three people? People came there in front of me, and as soon as I laid hands on them, the sickness disappeared. Now, said the head of the convent, we can eat. You can what? Oh yes, when a man of God comes, we look to God. We don't just pray, we fast. Now I have done a 30 day fast and I've met Jesus and met the devil and folks, believe me, I was humbled when they said, behind you we saw a vision of Jesus and every one of the sick was healed by him. There are so many people that are not touching Jesus, they're touching religion. And it's time, therefore, that we go to Colossians and we have a look at what the Word of God says about practicing the glory of God. Paul, he said, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae. So I'm going to talk in this talk, uh, talk about the, uh, the epistle to Colossians, which is full of comfort and full of hope when you're going through a tough time. Then in our next talk, I'm going to talk about the person and work of Jesus in lesson two, from chapter one, verse three, to chapter one, verse 13, in the place of praise and thanksgiving. In the third talk, I'm going to be talking about the primacy of Jesus, what he did in reconciling us. And then in the fourth talk, Paul's own ministry, chapter 1, verse 24 to verse 27. I'm going to also take time in the second series, in chapter 2, verse 5 onwards, of going against false teaching. We've got to see Jesus rose and has given us a place to sit with him in victory in our life. In our sixth talk, I'm going to be talking about the false teaching versus true teaching. And in the seventh was the fact that we died in Jesus and were risen in Jesus from chapter 2, verse 20 to chapter 3, verse 4. Okay, Keith, how do you work it out? So I'm going to take time in lesson 8, to how to practice putting off the old life that we had, chapter 3, verse 5 to 11, and chapter 9, and lesson 9, chapter 3, 12 to 17, putting on the new. I'm going to be talking about personal relationships, chapter 3, verse 8 to 4, verse 1, and then talking in lesson 11, chapter 4, verse 2 to 6, how to walk in wisdom. And finally, in our final talk I'm from chapter 4 verse 7 to 18 I'm going to be telling how we can personally witness to Jesus okay so in this introductory talk I want you to see that God has given us a very clear set out which is very impersonal about what he can do through Christ in our lives Jesus is the answer not religion, not faith, Jesus is the answer. I have been to America for 40 years, and this was brought home to me when two years ago we went to the cowboy church. The cowboy church is in Spokane, in Washington State, and they're cowboys. <laughs> they all meet as cowboys. And I mean, looked at 
a friend of mine, my friend said, you want to get Keith over? So I got in and he said, uh, Keith has come to us because he's a servant of Jesus Christ. I didn't look at his internet. I didn't look at his character. I asked Jesus. And God said, you're to treat Keith like an apostle. So would you please give him an appropriate offering? <laughs> <laughs> like he would to the Apostle Paul. They lifted the money, and then he said, Keith, you can now preach. And God stopped me after five minutes. I said, there's a man here, and he's got a stomachache. Would he stand up? There's a couple here, and they're not getting on with each other. Would you please stand up? And in the middle of the service, they were all healed. Absolutely, in front of everybody else. Because they weren't honoring me, they were honoring Jesus. These people they'd been praying for for six months, but they decided that they would make me a way to contact God and get answers. I thank God for that because, <laughs> to be honest with you, very often folk see, oh, it's old Keith again. They don't honor or see what God does. And we just had a meeting on September the 9th here in Ireland and on my doorstep last Monday previous to this a van load arrived we know you prayed for Ireland you know you've seen Ireland brought round we want to touch heaven and pray for you tremendous this is why these tapes are going out this is why this video is going out because what's in the past needs to be sometimes remembered I shared the testimony, they shared me their visions, and they're available from our website, www.audiochristian.com. And thank God, on Saturday, in the middle of rain, the sun came out, and people began to repent, and the nation began to get right with God. This is what's real. It's not man. You honour the man, but you honour Christ behind the man. You treat the man like Jesus, and things begin to happen. So this letter is full of the glory of Jesus. Not Paul. His relationship with the church, and it was written at a time of crisis when the nature of salvation was being obscured by false teaching, given a vital doctrine and personal application to the believer today. Colossae was set in a beautiful river. Um, it was of small importance, but it was not a city which Paul touched. He came to Ephesus and he says in Colossians 2, I didn't preach to you, I prayed for you. You haven't seen my face, but I've been praying for you. Epaphras was a guy that did the preaching. Now, I want to say this straight away. In all my ministry, there has always been a team. And I believe when you have a team, you see Jesus, not the one man. I have been at Toronto. I have been at Pensacola. I have been at the big revival in Florida with Todd Bentley. And I've seen man fail, but God has come in power. And when people seek the Lord, something happens. And certainly here, this letter was probably written by Paul when he was in chains. But he had a, a feeling for the Christians. They weren't his converts, they weren't his friends. And, but he's writing here to them that Jesus is their answer. And that's why I want to teach from my own experience as well as from the Word of God that there is no use in just knowing Jesus intellectually. Uh, I, I have a degree from Oxford, and we have intellectual knowledge of Greek and Latin since I was 10 years old. I taught it. But it didn't save me. That didn't bring me into the baptism. It, it is knowing Jesus in the heart. Actually, at the time, there was a teaching called Gnosticism, which says you get rid of your body and you worship angels and saints and intermediate powers. 
So Paul from the very beginning says, material body is not evil. It was made by God. And you don't go through yoga or transcendental meditation. You come through Jesus. Jesus is the answer. <coughs> the human body can have a certain value in fasting and praying, but Jesus is the Lord of creation. He can make new parts to your body. Deliverance comes through him. In fact, in Galatians, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. No longer I that live. <coughs> Christ lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Folks, in dealing with his followers, Jesus would say, <coughs> the works that I do shall he do also. I haven't a big church. I haven't millions of followers. But I have personal contact with Jesus Christ. We live day by day in that contact. And that's of all, in Colossians 1, Paul said, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. Who ordained Paul? It was Jesus. He's given accreditation by God. And that's been my own experience. Folks, I believe <coughs> Timothy was with Paul. So there's, when he says our brother, there were two of them. Timothy's grandmother was Lois, woman of faith, 1, 2 Timothy 5, 1. Eunice, his mother, <coughs> married a Greek, and Timothy was born at Lystra, where he was circumcised by Paul, so that people could say, oh, Timothy's a real Jew. But from infancy, 2 Timothy 3, 15, Paul said, Timothy, you've known the Bible. And I was getting Bible prizes even when I was at school. And I was starting uh, writing and reading in, he in uh, Greek when I was 10 years old. So I've known the power of a real scripture background, and I thank God for it. <clears throat> I actually have prayed for several children of mine, and our daughter Heather and all our kids were baptized in the Spirit, speaking in tongues. Uh, Gareth actually was speaking in tongues age four. He says, you can't stop me being water baptized. I'm through to God. <laughs> and Heather, our daughter, he said, mummy, you've got a temperature. Be healed in Jesus' name. And Elsie watched the thermometer go down. <laughs> so I believe that the promises to all creation, even to children, because I've seen it in our own kids, coming in to the power of God. Timothy now was a young man when these letters were written and he and Silvanus were there with Paul. And in fact, Paul warned Timothy, as I've said in our previous talks, against youthful lusts. And be, he says, be careful of the young women, 1 Timothy 5, 2, <laughs> because the one young women were running after this attractive leader. <clears throat> but he was dedicated to God's work, not his interests. When we got married, Elsie and I sought the will of God, and we were prepared not to get married until God said it. Thank God the marriage has lasted over 50 years. Thank God all our children have been going on with God, and they have married godly people. It's wonderful to have money, but it's better to have a family where we're going to be forever in heaven together. Praise God. And I hope in Jesus Christ, in Philippians 2, 19, and Paul says to send Timothy, he's a truly young man. Others are interested in their own welfare. Timothy seeks the kingdom of God. Timothy has proved himself as a son with his father in the work of the gospel. And he had a teaching ministry, 1 Thessalonians 3, 2. But he seems to have had a tummy where he had to watch. Because he says, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. <laughs> that doesn't mean you get drunk. <laughs> it meant that the water was bad, and so he, he drank wine instead. We have seen people from our home, uh, including our brother Eddie, who's recording this, and his wife Caroline, and it's been wonderful to see God in their marriage. Amen? But I believe, and I believe this with all my part, that it's something that God can do if we have a godly influence. And at this stage, I believe that the apostle was considered 
and looked on Timothy as equal to him. Age is no great barrier. God can use you because you're a saint. Do you get that word, saint? You're holy. If I go to the bank, the first thing they said, where's your identity? Where's your card? Where's your driving license? Do you know your identity? Christ in you. Because in 2 Thessalonians 1 or 10, Jesus is coming back and he's looking for himself in you. Actually, there were ten virgins. Jesus tells the story in Matthew 25. And some of them paid a price and got extra oil so that when he came back, they were able to go into the wedding feast. And I think we as believers must sanctify ourselves, must be consistent. Very important. Everyone who has this hope in him, 1 John 3, 3, makes himself holy even as he is holy. So forsake sin, experience with God. We have a body which is a holy temple and we are built to show the Lord in that body. The whole church is a holy nation like Israel on Peter 2, 4. And here the Bible dictionary points out that this is not just outwardly hieros, it's more like seminos. We are not only just considered holy, we are living in holiness, being like God. So the word is used of the tabernacle of Moses where God's presence and power was actually seen. One sermon I preached in Malayal, I disappeared. And that was the best sermon we had. <laughs> Jesus appeared in the pulpit <laughs> and everybody got touched and healed. Well, who are these bishops? They're overseers. Now bishops in my church, when I was at school, had a cook. Um, one of my friends wanted to be uh, confirmed by the bishop. So he wrote home, I just met the biggest crook in my life. <laughs> I didn't know what he was talking about. It was the bishop that was supposed to be confirming them. <laughs> he had to explain that confirmation included these bishops. But the Bible says nothing about confirmation. It says a lot about water baptism. And the elder or bishop had to have character. And these bishops were made by divine choice. There is a plural team. And they appointed, Acts 14, 23, bishops, plural, in every place. When I was in Chard, we didn't have a pastor. We had everyone in touch with God, fasting and praying. And if everybody was on the platform, the Holy Ghost showed whether the person was true or false. It was a tremendous time when people were getting healed sovereignly by the Holy Spirit. So here in James 5.14, if any sick call for the elders of the church, so those elders or leaders put in by the Spirit could pray a prayer of faith and were totally healed by the power of God. In verse 2, deacons served the elders in the church and we find mention of them in Romans 16, verse 1, and in the early church in Acts 6, <clears throat> while the leaders gave themselves to fasting and praying, the deacons looked after the widows. But Philip went down and preached and got miracles in Samaria. And he says, I want you to know grace and peace. In other words, praise brings victory. Shalom is the Greek word for peace, and it means health, wholeness, and holiness. And peace, the word irene is used, and this comes into salvation. Thy faith has saved thee, go into peace. And it also comes in healing. Do you know the root cause of most sickness is inflammation. When you get peace, you get healing. So here you have a topic of salvation and a topic of healing when you find that your whole body is at peace. You're not at war any longer. And I have found when I'm speaking in tongues or when I'm under the power of the Spirit, suddenly my healing takes place. My power takes place. And not only then, but I find Jesus appears and comes into the situation and gives me peace and healing through this. So when we're coming to this, please be practical. 
When I was at the meeting on Saturday, a person came from behind me and said, I don't know who you are. I don't know about your wife, but God is going to light a new fire under both of you. They didn't know me. Didn't know that we'd seen Ireland changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hadn't a clue. But they came up and I've been inspired to believe there is a big move of God in our land. And it's just beginning now. If you'd like to be part of it, why not join us for our second lesson, which is on the person and work of Jesus. Ireland does not need religion. It needs the Lord Jesus Christ.